What's going on guys? Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. Today we're diving into the whole idea of banned cards with just the recent banning of Uro from Standard. I kind of want to dive a little bit more into banning of cards, especially if you're a newer player or maybe you know, a player that just is returning back to Magic the Gathering. Uh, that there's a lot of cards in more recent Magic, in Standard at least, that have been seen in, seen in the ban list uh, of sorts. Whether it's all a bunch of cards all at one time or it's just a you know a card here a card there and the most recent one like i said being uro uh there are some cards that people i think currently say in standard right now that will eventually see a possible ban in, in the near future uh speculation is just because some of these cards that people are already saying are too good for magic the gathering are cards that just recently got released with the new set of zendikar horizon uh with that being said i mean we can always dive we're gonna dive deep a little bit into the history of cards that have been banned restricted and so on and so forth throughout you know magic the gathering's history and kind of to see you know relatively where this you know more recent standard season kind of ranks compared to you know previous mtg uh seasons prior uh with, with standard being the mind of what we're looking at uh with that being said guys if you like the video hit that like button but let's dive into magic the gathering's band history and kind of go over some things here all right so looking at the list here we go all the way back into its conception of 1994 for magic the gathering arena and this is where things kind of you know get a little more vague just because things are uh being shifted in shifted out as the game is being developed as you can kind of see here there's various cards in the beginning of time for when it comes to magic the gathering that are looking to be uh banned and or restricted restricted being if you don't know it's like you're only allowed to play a single copy i believe uh whereas banned is completely like removed from this you see a lot more restricted cards in like legacy and vengeance sets just because the card library is so large that uh they don't want to limit you from playing you know certain cards but at the same time too they don't want you to you know have a bunch of copies of single cards in the deck so as you can kind of see here there's a lot more announcements just because like i said the game is still being developed and it actually takes until we get to about 2001 um about around here 2001 uh 2003 actually is really where i'll say where we start seeing a little bit more in the way of bans and restrictions when it comes to standard with this being said this is roughly around where i get into magic the gathering being uh roughly around the scourge block mirrodin uh the original mirrodin and i think eighth edition was probably the current core set at the time uh this is also when they did eighth edition fifth edition so on and so forth like where they instead of doing like m whatever this is actually where they just had this is exhibition of this core set uh with that being said you can kind of see a lot more variety of magic the gathering uh types of uh formats are have been introduced you've got extended then like i said the vintage and legacy which kind of dates back all the way to the beginning of magic and you can see a lot more cards being changed in and changed out with these sets as time goes on just because i think when you introduce more cards into the formats it kind of like fluctuates when you especially when you have very large card pools in those older formats it definitely they need more tweaks a little bit more than say standard where standard's a little bit smaller of a block i think standard wasn't introduced until like 99 i could be wrong let me know in the comments below if i if i'm off or exactly when maybe it actually uh happens so we kind of get into the mirrodin block and i'll be quite honest if you're not really familiar with the mirrodin block this is actually where we get a big influx of artifacts into the into magic the gathering uh, in the sense of there's a lot of things that have uh, one we get artifact lands which uh, is I guess a mistake that they look back on saying that was probably not a good idea uh, there's things that have this thing called affinity for artifacts which is another thing that <laughs> caused a lot of issues I think in standard roughly around this time just because uh, it was actually a really good mechanic and especially with there being so many artifacts influxed into the, the format uh, it definitely created some issues I think for balance because technically you know these affinity decks uh, you know were pretty good I, I, I had a friend who played you know the the Arcbound Ravager Affinity style deck, and it was very, very strong. Uh, but that being said, you know, they, they've come out and then, you know, they realized that there's some cards that were just way too good. So we see like our first ban from like the standard where, I, like I said, this is where I'm more familiar with, and this is where Skull Clamp is banned. Skull Clamp is an equipment card from um, Mirrodin. I know this is an example from a different set, but this is, I guess, where the image is from. It gets target, uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus minus one when a equipped creature. Uh, spin to a graveyard and draw two cards so the one thing i kind of didn't mention as well there's this uh i forget what the term for it is but it was like this ability i know arcbound ravager itself has it um if i can find where he gets banned uh it has module so what this is is that you know this creature enters the battlefield whatever the module is so if it's module one it enters in with a one one counter on it so what would happen is you'd put a skull clamp on like a one one creature with module one i think there was uh, arcbound worker i think is the card off the top of my head and that card pretty much have a one one counter it's a one one 
Uh, you put a skull clamp on it, you now draw two cards, now you take this module counter, and it actually can move to another artifact creature that you currently have. And with that being said, skull clamp was just way too broken, so you're drawing two cards, you're killing a creature, but you're making another creature stronger. Uh, with that being said, it just seemed way too good for the current format, and they went ahead and banned that immediately. It took a little bit of time, and there was not really too much in the way of bannings in, in Standard in 2004 other than that one card. But then we get to 2005, and you know this is where they're not. This is where I think where we move on from uh, Mirrodin as a whole, and we start getting into almost like right about when Kamigawa is going to be released. Uh, I my my history could be slightly wrong, but Kamigawa came out at some point. Where that's that's that like Japanese inspired uh, ninjas and stuff like that, and they actually realized how good affinity decks were just because at this point we had dark steel also come out and then we also have fifth dawn come out which just expanded upon this whole artifact idea just because there's a lot of artifact cards that came out from this and then, then they realized you know what we got to get rid of arcbound ravager we got to get rid of disciple of the vault and you know what these artifact lands are just way too good especially for these cards that have affinity for artifacts so they completely banned all of these cards and you may be thinking to yourself well you know they banned a whole bunch of cards in this last year of like standard but I mean, here's a clear example of cards they put into the deck, anywhere's ranger from commons to uncommons, and even commons, uh, and then just completely getting rid of them. Uh, just realizing that these cards synergize way too well, and uh, it's that conception, if you ever look at their ban and restrict announcements, usually they see a meta shift where I, I would assume at this point in March of 2005, a lot of people were playing uh, these affinity style decks, and there just being uh, too many of them were being, you know, in the metagame which wasn't causing diversity in the format as a whole and at this time too the internet was still uh, for magic the gathering at least was still a little bit newer so we really didn't have a lot of resources plus we're not playing i think magic the gathering online was a thing but i think it's very early in the internet idea like not as many people are playing games on their computer online let alone i think this is a point where a lot of people are switching over from ds uh from like you know 50 you know dial-up modems or dial-up modems to like you know cable slash dsl uh yet again show my age but um, so it takes a lot more time for this information to get spread around. But as you know, the tournament scene, you know, announces like, you know, the winners and things like that, you know, you start seeing these decks kind of start going into the meta. And that's the other thing too, I think that a lot of people don't realize it's, it's a lot easier now for people to find like the best deck. And then a lot of people just kind of, you know, group go towards that best deck. Cause I mean, what's the point of playing like the second best deck if there's a, the best deck. And I think that's the, the thing it, like the thing with current magic is that, you know, we kind of like just bounce every people people just bounce from deck to deck to deck just because they find like the best deck and something gets changed in that and then it's not the best deck anymore they move on to the next best deck and so on and so forth and then it causes this issue where the big influx of the meta is now shifted towards that particular thing but with that being said you know you kind of go back into just a ban and ban and restricted thing and so this is like for a while this is like the big in 2005 this was the big like ban in and then you kind of go on and so on and so forth. And it actually, to be quite honest, 2006, I think 2007, I don't think we really hit our first next standard ban until about, I would say it's, yeah, 2011. And this is when Zendik, the first Zendikar came out and uh, two cards uh, right off the bat kind of stand out. And I also did play Magic around this time too. So one card being Jace the Mind Sculptor was, which was like one of the best Planeswalkers out there. I think it's still a fairly, fairly strong planeswalker even the older legacy formats but the it's the first ever i think the only ever planeswalker i could be wrong yet again that has four abilities on it it was definitely the first one um i know when that happened everyone like went crazy and i actually did play deck multiple control decks that played jason mind sculptor and he was just so good and the thing with him was is that pretty much um you can his plus two was pretty decent his zero ability was very strong and the fact that he had a minus one bounce target creature to its owner's hand was fairly good and if you ever got to minus 12 you could go kind of go off and the decks kind of were a little bit slower i think at this time too so jace was actually very very strong and very very prominent and so for a mystic was like kind of like the counterbalance for control decks because it was allowing you to pretty much search your library for an equipment card reveal it put your hand shelf our library and you can actually cheat in uh the equipment card by tapping it and tapping two mana to kind of cheat onto the battlefield and i think this is the time where i forget what the artifact was it was a 4-4 equipment that you create like this little uh spore counter you put it on it or something and it gave like trample and vigilance or something like that something really weird but it was really really good and that was also the prominent deck currently and i think i think the deck also spliced in jason mind sculptor but you know it was just one of those things that was just kind of breaking the meta just because people were shifting that way um and then you kind of go on and on and we kind of see here that like not much is going on in standard for the most part there's some of the older formats just because like i said the mana pool is a lot larger so they have to kind of make adjustments as things were going on and we kind of get more into the now modern magic 
I will say this uh, around this time this is probably where I'm a little bit more spotty in Magic's kind of history just because I kind of kind of like I didn't really have a card store that I would go to normally where I where I did in the previous like older times when I played like you know Zendikar and Mirrod and stuff like that this is kind of where I was like going from like I, I could probably say like 20 something you know I was probably in my 20 somethings at this point so it was like kind of more doing like other things instead of going to the card store every Friday and stuff like that and I was also like I said I didn't have a home card store that I would play you know local magic with and I think this is yet again this is we don't really have many methods to really play online magic at this point other than Magic the Gathering online and all the other video games that came out with Magic the Gathering were kind of a little bit more meh I would say so you know we got the various sets that came out you know there was a there's a couple things you know they brought Emrakul which is pretty cool but you know they they realized that some of these cards are maybe a little bit too strong and you kind of see like okay here's some standard bands here's another standard band okay then we got some more standard bands just because I guess you know we're now getting into more modern internet people the word gets out when a deck is good and it starts representing it a lot of the majority of you know the tournament scene they they will make adjustments to kind of fix it to try to give more diversity to the format as a whole because no one likes a very stale standards and I, I think that's the one thing that you'll realize as we talk about uh you know the band 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 history in magic is that when you know there's a giant portion of the meta like let's just say 50 percent plus of the meta is playing you know this one deck there's a problem and you know magic now has to figure out how to solve that problem and i know it does anger a lot of people because magic the gathering is an investment whether it's time or money or a little bit of both uh it is an investment i definitely can understand why people get angry so we kind of keep on going and keep on going. Uh, 2018, other than this little ban in the beginning of the year, it was pretty quiet for standard bans. Uh, we Nexus of Fate and M19 gets banned. I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really play it during this time, so it's definitely tough for me to understand like how that affected the whole shift, what people were playing. Uh, you know, then we get into like Rampage and Ferocidon, which is another ban. Uh, okay, now we have Field of the Dead, which has been banned, and Playing that in historic uh, magic on MTG Arena, definitely a card that I can definitely see why it's too good, and there's definitely ways to search it up and, you know, kind of abuse how good it was. Uh, and then we kind of get into November, and this is actually where, right before I kind of get into it, so I really didn't play at the beginning of Throne of Eldraine, but, you know, this is where the Oko, the Once Upon a Time, and then the Veil of Summer all kind of get banned. And this is, like I said, I'm not really too, too familiar, but, like, Oko was just one of those things I can definitely see why. It's a three-mana Planeswalker with four loyalty. The create a food token, which is, I know, a very prime thing of the set, is very good. I think the plus... The, it has two pluses, one being plus two, one being plus one, and one being minus five. And I think the minus... Well, all these pluses and the minus five, I think it was definitely, like, way too good for the cost it was. I think it's too cheap uh, for what it's trying to do. So I can definitely see why this is a problem. I don't know if it's as bad as like Jace the Mind Sculptor, but I can see why people would even splash, you know, if you're playing blue-green, it's like you should play this card. And that kind of goes on with the more modern modern style of magic, like in the current standard that we're talking about. And then we kind of get a little bit of break until about, we get about into, uh, where is it? I think it's like May? Where's all the bands? Uh, do, 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 do. Is it June? Okay, so maybe it's June. I thought there was a ban in the it, when I first got into Magic, but I, I guess I was wrong. So you get into June, and this is where we get the Agent of Treachery and the Fire's Intervention. And and the thing is, if you look here, Agent of Treachery, it's one of those things that right off the bat, it's a seven mana two three, and you'd be like, that's ah, not that very good. But this is, I think, where a lot of people were. There's a lot more uh, spells to kind of either search from up, playing for cheaper, or playing for free. Uh, there's ways to flicker him to kind of abuse the ability, so he, you know, he triggers this multiple times. Uh, it's just one of those things that people were just getting annoyed with and you know if there was any deck that was going to be able to kind of cheat him onto the battle for cheaper there were there were many decks that just did that and it kind of like ruined that style of you know the meta and then you get to, into fires of invention and yet again fires of invention four mana enchantment you can only cast spells during our turn so it turns off you playing anything in response to your opponents on their turn uh, i mean you can't cast more than two spells but the only thing is is that you can technically cast any spell that is equal to or less than the amount of mana you have the amount of lanes you have on the battlefield so essentially you could uh cast a spell for two spells that are like five on the next turn and not actually actually have to tap any mana and then if they have, they have any use abilities you can definitely see why fire's invention was just like one of those cards that was just maybe a little bit too good like i said it does have its kickbacks but if you're playing like two five cost spells on your turn and your opponent like can only cast maybe one and on top of this, you know, maybe if there's some ramp in the deck, you're kind of already ahead in the process of how many lands are on the battlefield. So you're casting a lot stronger spells and your opponent's still trying to play catch up. And this didn't really allow it. Sure, there was ways to get around it, but right off the bat, you know, playing spells for essentially free uh, is definitely uh, tough to kind of like get around and definitely a little bit too good. And 
you know, maybe you didn't see a lot of Fire Invention decks in maybe the best of one, but in the best of three tournament scene, I would, I definitely could see this being a card that would definitely represent a good majority of the field just being that good. And you kind of go in, we don't really have anything in July, you know, they get the big historic uh, ban in July, but nothing really too crazy. And then we get into August, and this is where they go into the next big step. And this is where they kind of touch on some things that are cards that were rotating out of standard at this time. But then, you know, because these cards were getting... Uh, the cards in June were getting banned, people were kind of finding their way, M21 got released, so the, the overall meta pool of cards was a lot bigger. And then we get into Cauldron Familiar, which I remember them saying, it kind of like the, the process of sacking it to the oven and replaying it and doing that over and over again was kind of like, kind of slowed down the game a little bit too much, so they definitely wanted to get rid of that. It was, the, it, was a, it was a gameplay disruption, I think is what they called it. So they got rid of, they banned Cauldron Familiar, which I mean, it's... It, it wasn't a strong card it's just a super annoying card with the cards that were available uh Gore spiral was another card it's a two mana you know draw a card you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield at instant speed which was very strong uh just because there's a lot of ramp uh it definitely was a card that was abusing uh you know ramping up and i mean just playing a two cost draw a card and possibly playing additional land is is just very good at instant speed to ferry the time raveler which was one of those cards when i first got back into magic like on the arena client for example it was one of those cards i didn't understand why they would make a card like this because it deck it pretty much turned magic the gathering into hearthstone because his, his natural ability was that if he's out on the battlefield uh they can only play instance anytime they cast a sorcery which i think disrupted a lot of you know the flash style decks a lot of even control decks in general if you weren't able to get rid of teferi the time rattler as a control deck your deck was pretty much you know you're out of luck so definitely a card that you know really turned off a lot of decks and you know doesn't promote like the way magic the gathering works compared to hearthstone where like magic the gathering there's interactions on both turns which i think is one of those things if you have a card that does that you know it's kind of unfortunate and then we got will just have reclamation which was like another card which was I think fairly strong in the sense that you know you could play this untap lands at the end of your turn uh, you know have reactive spells up during your opponent's turn and then you know on your turn you can play things untap them so on and so forth and you know this was definitely very good in like the simic flash decks and things like that where having lands untapped to be able to react play counter spells or play creatures at flash speed definitely was a little bit a little bit strong I'm actually very surprised it took so long for them to get to this. I just think it was just one of those things that, you know, people went from, like, the Fires of Invention decks, then into, like, the more, like, then they went into Teamer, uh, well, there's, like, Romation decks and things like that. Um, and, it, you know, currently I think it, where it lands is, like, you know, now there's, like, people playing these, like, ramp decks around Oka, uh, Omnath and, um, you know, you know, playing things that have Lucky Clover. The Adventures deck is kind of, like, the new... I think fires style deck so it's one of those things that eventually we'll probably see some more bands like i said uh, when it comes to that and then like i said the more recent one is being uro and just looking at uro overall as a card he is a card that is is fairly strong it kind of does what the giant growth are uh time uh not time spiral uh whatchamacallit uh does the same thing as growth spiral uh and then uro is kind of like the same thing but now additionally you gain three life uh, you get to draw a card and then put a land into battlefield from your hand. Um, so essentially, like a spiral, but now you're getting three life for one additional mana. So pretty much, it's like a it's like two cards and like one. Um, and then on top of it, in the late game, you, if you have things in your graveyard, you now have to have four exile and five cards from your live uh, your graveyard and playing them on the battlefield. And the problem with him is that he was he's like this thing that it, yet again, if you play blue green and any sort, he's a de he's a card that you definitely found, and it was definitely one of those cards that. You know, essentially, if a card, if a deck played multiples of these for the three costs, you know, essentially you're adding like let's just say you added three of them. That, that means you have to do nine additional damage to them. Uh, they have three possibly additional lands on the battlefield, so it was like a very strong curve spell. And I think the problem is, is that it was just it was one of those things that was definitely a card that you saw in a lot of the good decks that may have been banned prior uh, from the cards that were you know that included these cards. And it was one of those things that overall it was something i think that just needs to be done it's you know it's one of those things i think it's they just took their time you know they want me want to sell enough packs that he came in to eventually ban him i don't really know there's always those conspiracies but i think it's one of those things that you kind of just saw the pattern and i'm sure if you look at the metadata you'll see like all of all the decks that some of these cards were banned in you definitely could see him being one of those cards that are in these decks that kind of just make these decks just that much better uh and with that being said i mean overall if you're confused a little bit why wizards bans things it's like it's more so they do, they want to keep the tournament scene a little bit interesting, and I know a lot of people will say Omnath um, decks or Landfall decks are really the current broken thing. But if you actually look at the metadata for the best of one, at least I know a lot of people are now swaying towards Rogues, 
which is I think a fairly competitive deck. It's fairly strong. Uh, what it's trying to do. Mono red is always a presence. Um, that's not really a problem. I I honestly think in the best of one because I think decks are a little bit more aggressive and there's no sideboarding, so I think it keeps the decks a little bit on the on uh you know you hopefully have the right cards to play against the deck you're playing. With that being said, I mean the, I think the next card that maybe our next deck that could be considered I think is the teamer deck, like the the adventures deck or the deck, any deck could play Lucky Clover because I think Lucky Clover is just a too good of an ability. It's like I wouldn't I would say it's probably on the par with like Wilderness Wilderness Reclamation, uh, just because we really don't have any good counter spells to get rid of the stack of spells that get casted from that Lucky Clover trigger, um, and then being able to like combine that with the fairy that looks into your sideboard. And allows you to bring a cyborg card into your hand and allowing you to you know possibly get multiples for the cost of you know the one is i think too strong i think in that in that also opinion so i would say possibly in the near future if the ameth x stay stay where they are and they don't want to ban the ameth or possibly lotus cobra i think the next next step would be kind of looking at that adventure style deck and maybe probably getting rid of the lucky clover um another card that sticks out is uh ember cleave uh it's another card that i feel like a lot of people yet again get frustrated with especially when they play mono red they know eventually you, you know when you get like turn four or turn five against ember uh mono red and they have a decent sized board they're more than likely will be an ember cleave i know it's not as the mono red deck is not isn't as fast because you don't want to play at the stage to kind of you know draw cards deeper and these are just you know you look at these decks and these are just cards that just kind of like stick out and yes i know like ember cleave is like a staple um you know lucky clover is a staple but I think an adventure deck could still work. It's just I think the Lucky Clover just abuses, you know, allowing you to play multiple copies of a single spell for the same cost is just a little bit too good and it kind of disrupts the meta as a whole. Like, you know, getting multiple copies of the Brazen Borrower bounce back and multiple copies of a Bone Crusher Giant to the face, getting multiple copies of the Giant, the, the darn three cost search library for two lands, put them onto the battlefield. Not even tap, just put them on the battlefield is, is fairly strong. And you're looking at possibly even ramping up really, really quick. It's just like I think that deck is just like you know there's no way to really stop it unless you get rid of the lucky clover or your opponent's not lucky enough to draw the lucky clover pun intended uh but overall it's like you can kind of see why a card would get banned and the other thing too it's only a two mana artifact it's not it's not expensive if you draw in the early game it's a benefit to you if you draw in the late game it's still good because that's when you're trying to finish off your opponent um it's just one of those things that you can definitely see it's not like a burden like if, if the lucky clover was more expensive let's just say it was like five mana it more than likely you know you probably splash them in the deck but it's more of a late game card the fact that it's in the early game it disrupts like you trying to combat these uh teamer or uh simic uh adventure decks as a whole and i think that's that's the issue there it's like like your opponent's setting up you're trying to set up and you're trying to counteract whatever they're doing and if they have these cards that just kind of either do damage across to each of your creatures to kind of slow, slow down your maybe your wall you're trying to build to prevent the bleed in per se and try to like hopefully combat and find like answers i uh, i think that's the issue like i said if it was at a later game or more expensive spell that is something that i think would definitely you know be good but because throne of eldraine is already out and you, magic's never gone back other than the more recent uh companion cards it really changed text uh the best the next best option is probably ban the card as a whole just because of it being too strong and and don't get me wrong i'm not trying to get on a rant about why lucky clover is too broken it's just you know there's just cards that will stick out and you know you when you look at it and analyze it it's like it's just a card that sure it's only good in the adventure style decks but i think it's just one of those cards that's too good in adventure decks for the meta as a whole and if they want to kind of go back into that little bit not everything being super powerful but kind of go back into this more level like playing field i think that's the card that would kind of take adventure down a peg to kind of you know bring the meta more in a flat line as a whole um but with that being said i know i kind of ranted and i don't know if this video was 100 percent helpful because i feel like i start ranting about things um but with that being said if you have any questions about you know banned cards and or anything like that let me know in the comments below i do appreciate it i'll try my best to answer any questions you guys do leave if you want to check out another video that uh youtube's recommending to you as i'm recording as i'm saying this little bit of outro uh you know click one of those uh i do have playlists that have you know more new player questions so if you want to go back and look at one of those maybe that'll be here uh, if you like the video, guys, hit that like button. If you want to post more videos, hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next video.